Hi, I'm Jervis Lewis, and today I'm going to show you how to use scheduled tasks in Plesk. Those are akin to cron tabs or the Windows scheduled tasks, and they are little bits of code that you can execute every once in a while on a regular basis without you having to go in and you know, manually kick it off. So that's good for creating backups, clearing out log files, and emailing yourself, status reports of how your server's doing, and so forth and so forth. So <clears throat> let me show you where we can find those in Plesk. I'm using uh, CentOS 6.5 here. On Windows, this uh, is going to look very, very similar, if not exactly the same. But if you're the administrator, you can head over here to Tools and Settings, and then under the Tools and Resources tab, you find Scheduled Tasks here. If you don't have the sidebar here, you may be using Power User Mode, in which case you have these tabs, one of which will say Server, and that'll get you to this page, the Tools and Settings page. So click on Scheduled Tasks, or Scheduled Tasks in Britain, and you see a long list of system users. And click on a user, like Root, and you get a list of Roots scheduled tasks. If you're a Plesk customer, this looks a little bit different. As a customer, you only have access to your own scheduled tasks, not to everyone else's, like system administrators do. In which case, you will see a screen similar to this as a customer in Plesk. And scheduled tasks are on the right hand side here. Again, click on it and you go to this screen which lists your own scheduled tasks. So in my case, I don't have any, so I should maybe create one to demonstrate this. Add a task, and that'll take care of that. Up comes a relatively cryptic list of stuff, and we'll go through all this one step at a time. Um, these fields at the top here let you define when your task needs to run. So what minute exactly? So that'll be zero would be on minute zero, uh, 30 would be 30 minutes past the hour, and 59 would be one minute to the full hour. Hour, uh, same thing, uh, this is military time here, so zero would be midnight, 11 would be 11 o'clock in the morning, 23 would be 11 o'clock in the evening. Day of the month, same thing. You have 1 to 31 values that you can use here. Obviously, 1 being the first of the month, and 31 being, well, the 31st of the month, if it exists. Otherwise, it'll be 30. That exists in every month except for February, in which uh, only 28 exist, or 29 once every four years. So if you want to be really specific about that. A month, the same thing. You can either type in a number here. Uh, 1 would be January, 12 would be December. But Plesk also has this little drop-down menu here. If you don't want to deal with the numeric value, you just pick, well, run this in May. Uh, same thing for day of the week. You can either enter a number. So 0 is Sunday. 1 is Monday, and so forth. 6 is Saturday, and 7 is also Sunday. So 0 and 7 are both Sunday. Or again, you just pick a day of the week from the drop-down menu here. If you want to schedule something like every day of the week, you can use the star. That's the asterisk. Shift 8, I think, is on a, is on a UK keyboard here. Uh, that would be every day of the week. And you can use the star in all the other boxes as well. So if you want to run something at every minute, that would be star. Uh, very unlikely. You probably want to run that on minute zero, if anything. Uh, and you want to run something perhaps once every hour. But you also may want to run something once every four hours. And that's where another little thing comes in handy. And Plesk hints at that down here when it describes star slash four. So star slash four means run this every four hours. Likewise, if you want to do this um, every day, you just do that. Or if you want to run something every once every week, you want to go star slash seven. That would be every seven days, every four hours on the minute. You can use this for any of these values here. Now the command down here, this is a, a relatively important box. This is the full path to the actual command you want to execute. So in my case, uh, perhaps I have a script that's in var and it's just called script.php. 
this is the full path. So script.php at this location needs to be executable by this system user. So uh, whatever my subscription system user is, needs to have execute permissions to this file. It's as if you were running this from the command line. You can also pass parameters here if your script takes parameters and all the output the script would produce will be emailed to the system user. So the way this works is if you go onto the command line and run the script and, and you would get any feedback from the script. It could be anything as simple as, well, I've, I've done it, thanks, I've run, or you get a system report or something um, that you'd be printed that would be printed out on the screen, then uh, this script or the cron tab function would send you an email with that output. That could be kind of annoying if you don't have, if the script doesn't support something like a mute function and you don't want 12 emails every minute or 20 emails per hour or something, um, you can divert the output of the script to dev null. We call it dev null's desk and he'll deal with it much later. Now it just means that the output will be diverted to nothing. And the way this works is that after your script here, you put a greater than sign to say we're diverting this either to another file if you want to uh, accumulate all the output of all these tasks to a file, you just type in a full path to a file name, or you say def null to greater than ampersand one. I know this is slightly cryptic, but I'll mention this more in my um, in the article in which this video is embedded here. Uh, this means basically all the output that this script generates will be diverted to nowhere and will never be seen. So that includes error messages. Once you're done, I'll hit OK, and then my task is scheduled. So this list that Plesk presents here of all your scheduled tasks, so we only have one active here, uh, that's kind of nice to see. You see the full path to your script and whatever other parameters you're passing, and you see these numbers here, which are the equivalent to what you'd see on the Unix Chrome tab. So really what Plesk is doing here, Plesk isn't executing your cron jobs for you. Plesk is only giving you access to the command line tool, which is on, on Unix, is called crontab. In Windows, it used to be um, AT. Uh, there's another one that's just called sh tasks, I believe. And that's basically what, what Plesk presents here. It's a wrapper to that function. So you can literally use the, the on, on Linux systems, you can use uh, crontab hyphen L to list whatever uh, tasks you have for this user. And they will be presented with these funky numbers here. If you want to remove a task, just select it and hit remove, but that'll get rid of it from the system altogether. You may also just want to leave the task and just pause it for a while. If you're thinking, well, uh, for the next four weeks, I don't want to run this or I want to run this when I'm ready for this again, you can head over here and click on the task and notice that little checkbox up here, which, has, which says switched on, just untick it, hit OK and the task is switched off, so no green thing. If this was green, then you know it's switched on. I believe we can even click that here. Is that a button? It is, look at that. You can just click that little tick box to switch a task on and off. And if you want to change a task, just again, hop in here and change the parameters uh, of when you want that task to be executed. So these are little guidelines here. Oh yeah, there's another, another little um, thing here. If you want a task to be executed uh, between uh, 9 o'clock in the morning and 5 in the afternoon. You could say 9 hyphen 17. That'd be from 9 in the morning to 5 and then from 6 o'clock until 8 o'clock in the next morning this won't be running anymore. But between 9 and 5 in the afternoon it'll run on every hour. There's one last thing I want to point out here which is the settings box up here. If you click that you have three options. Switched off as the default, and this is a way of Plesk being able to tell you when a specific task has run, if you choose to be notified when that happens. So you don't have to rely on the task to do that, you can ask Plesk to do that. Switched off obviously means nothing is gonna happen, or you can select uh, send to the default email address that is associated with this subscription, or you can send it to a specific email address. And you just type in whatever, you know, steve at domain.com. And when you do that, then Plesk will go ahead and send you an email saying, hey, task XYZ has just been executed, just so that you can keep an eye on what's happening on your server. 
that was it. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop me a line or write a comment on this video. And if you like this video, please share it with friends, family and total strangers. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Bye for now. I will see you next time.